Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. I am Ryan Rappersad, and today I will be reviewing the Galaxy Buds from Samsung. Listen to our mini-series on headphones and earbuds. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO63. Hello everybody, this is Ryan here, and I am reviewing the Galaxy Buds today. These are Samsung's response to the AirPods from Apple. Now, I received my Galaxy Buds from the pre-order gift process from the Galaxy S10 that I purchased earlier this year. Now, as a pre-order gift, it took about a month and a half to arrive. I didn't have to pay anything additional for them, which was nice. I just had to submit, you know, basically a request through the Samsung Shop app after I purchased my phone. And then it did a combination of asking you for the receipt uh, of your product from wherever you bought it from, whether it was from Samsung or Best Buy or so on. And then it just took the serial number and finally sent it to me. So it took about a month. Uh, I've ordered the phone in early March and now I've received the buds in mid-April. So let's get some of the boring stuff out of the way and then we'll talk about the interesting part. Uh, the regular price for this product, the Galaxy Buds, are about $129. Later in the episode, I will tell you why I think that is a fair price. But until then, uh, you'll have to bear with me. My set is white. Now, I believe there is a black version available, but I can't f- seem to find it on the website. And the pre-order version is only available in white, uh, which is kind of a shame. I would think they would look very nice in a nice shiny or matte black. White is okay, but it's not not great. Not very premium, in my opinion, especially when you put it down on a black S10+. Plus. Uh, let's talk about the case. The case is pill-shaped. It is also white. It's also pretty small. I would say it's it's about two visor widths of the S10+. Plus. That is to say the camera bump on the back. About two widths of that. Wireless charging built in, which is nice. It works great with a wireless charging pad of any Qi variety. And I happen to have an Anchor model here. And it works just fine with that. It also works just fine on the built-in S10 Plus charging mechanism. Now, that is a gimmick, and I do not advise anybody to use such a thing, so don't even bother. I will say that uh, I did not test it thoroughly, but I would imagine that if you spent 20 minutes using your phone to charge your buds from effectively zero, you could probably get enough for a standard half-hour commute, if not longer. But again, I don't recommend it because it will drain your battery more than the transfer rate makes you assume that it would but at least you'll know when it's charged because the case itself has a green and red charging light on the outside so if the buds are not charged yet you'll see red and if the buds are charged now you'll see green so you'll know exactly when it is safe to take them off your wireless charger or unplug them yes that's right you can also unplug them so this pill-shaped case it also has a type c port which is the appropriate port type for charging things, not uh, proprietary. And also, you don't have to pay more for a special charging case. Hmm. The case also has a green and red connection light on the inside. Basically, what happens is you open the case, and nothing happens, except a little light will go on. It'll go from red to green if it can automatically connect to your phone. So... If you have a Bluetooth connection to your phone, I don't know exactly what the process is. I assume that you'll have to pair it in a more traditional way. But if you have one of these hipster phones, one of these Galaxy phones, what will actually happen is your Galaxy phone is whitelisted, I guess, to automatically connect to uh, these buds. And uh, it'll ask you on the phone, hey, do you want to connect to the buds? I just saw them open nearby. And if you hit yes, it'll just pair really quick. The first time you do it, you'll have to kind of just get a welcome setup screen kind of going, but it's not a big deal. On subsequent repairs, it's instantly available. Like, it just pops up and it says, hey, I paired your buds nearby. Cool, isn't it? Uh, And they just wake up and they just pair. It's kind of cool. So you'll know exactly when you did pair, even in the buds version, uh, in the case, when the uh, green light comes on. Otherwise, if you just look at them for fun, the little red light will eventually come back on. Now let's talk about the buds themselves. So enough about the case. The buds themselves. So uh, this is kind of where the interesting part comes in for me. So now I have had 
headphones for many years. I am actually wearing ATH50X headphones. Uh, behind me, I happen to have uh, MDR V6 headphones. Upstairs in my work bag, I have uh, Sony noise canceling headphones. In my other work bag, I have a bone conjunction headphone. I have headphones all over the place. With the Galaxy S10, I have AKG headphones. So again, headphones all over the place. Now, usually what happens with headphones and my ears is that they don't work. If they are earbuds in particular, they just do not work. They will fall out constantly. So I don't normally wear headphones uh, that are earbud typed for that reason. So when I walk the dog, uh, if it's winter, I will actually just use my noise canceling headphones because I A, I get earmuffs out of it, and B, they stay in because they're just on my ears. But in the summer when it's warm and it's too hot to wear those, uh, I just don't wear anything and I don't listen to anything while I'm walking the dog. Now, these Galaxy Buds are a little bit different. I can actually wear them. They actually stay in my ear just fine for a prolonged period of time. I don't understand the mechanism for this coincidence or miracle, but that's pretty cool. Um, I can go for a dog walk and there's no problem. Let's talk a little bit, little bit about the physical nature of these buds. So in the box, it comes with a few different tips for the ear pieces. Um, you just stick them in. Uh, there's a little shark fin on the adjacent backside to where you, you stick the noise part into your ear. And I think the ear fin is intended so that it could be a an additional latch. I guess you could call it, for holding it in your ear. Now, I have not actually experienced it like that. Even just the earpiece itself fits into my ear in such a particularly snug way that it actually just stays in. But the shark fin might offer some more assurance that it does. Again, mine are white, so that means they're kind of weird looking, I would say. I have a ton of hair. I don't know if you have a ton of hair, but since I do, you don't get to see that I'm even wearing them. The buds actually do have some controls on them built in. One of these controls, and I'll mention in a minute, is customizable. So basically the process after you pair them with your phone, if you're using one of these hipster phones, basically what you get is uh, kind of a walkthrough. It tells you what you can do, and it, it effectively tells you that you can tap to pause and play, you can double tap to answer a call or end a call or play whatever the next audio thing is triple tap to play previous and finally the customizable one you can long press to talk to customizable either bixby or google uh which is an appreciated feature because i never really want to talk to bixby although i did think about it because unlike google which does not have 100 percent complete access to all phone settings bixby does apparently so you can do some fancier things with Bixby that Google might not be able to do. Let's talk about audio quality now. It's okay. Uh, that's my review on audio quality. No, no, let's, let's, let, let's get a little bit more detail. I experimented with various types of audio, such as some podcasts, ambient audio, radio from YouTube, and I also watched just a few uh, review videos from KBHD and some other groups just to see what regular audio would sound like. I also listened to some episodes of In Boot Camp with Matthew Petchel. Different episodes and different audio types sound different, of course. At this point, I would say the music did not sound as good as the podcasts. There could be some bias, though. I did notice that they're kind of quiet in real life situations. So if you're on uh, the train or you're in a crowd of people, they're a little quiet in my opinion. So when I was listening to the music, I was at home uh, in a quiet room. So I was able to he listen for more uh, detail that wasn't there. Whereas when I was out and about and listening to a podcast uh, in various places, you know, it's it you can't hear as much. The There's not as much... Since they're a little quieter in those situations, you can't hear as much detail. But in those places, you're not looking for the detail. You're looking for, is it loud enough to hear the person that I'm t listening to talk? So that's that's an interesting trade-off there, I suppose. In addition to that, since they're in-ear headphones, they're actually quite isolating. And they're, in fact, more isolating to, than the uh, other headphones that I use regularly, which are my bone conduction headphones. Now, these are uh, strange. 
uh, compared to those because they actually fill in your whole ear canal kind of thing. So you can't hear as much really at all on the outside. And you, you, when you listen to yourself talk, you just sound ridiculous. So if you, if you don't mind that, then these are great for that. Of course, these are not as nice as noise canceling Sony headphones that I also have. And those are true noise canceling, whereas these just are isolating and maybe have a little bit of active noise canceling. Let's talk about special features. So the Galaxy wearable app, uh, with the app, and this app gets set up for you the first time you pair, you can see the charge level of the case and the buds themselves when they're out of the case, of course. Uh, you can tinker with the equalizer, which didn't seem to do much for me, but of course I don't even know what a music is. You can tinker with the notification settings, uh, which is actually kind of cool. You can have a whitelist of apps that are, you know, things that might make notification sounds on your phone. And you, when you make that whitelist, they'll get forwarded to the buds. So what I did is I left the calendar, Slack, and Telegram on the whitelist, and I turned everything else off. That way I could ignore your useless emails because they're useless. Uh, so it was actually really cool. I actually <laughs> forgot to leave my text message app on. And I got an important text message that I didn't know that I got until I happened to look at my phone sometime later. Because when I had the buds in, of course, I had not put that in the whitelist. So I didn't hear it. That was interesting. So it's kind of cool that you can whitelist specific apps for notification support. By default, there are some active noise canceling features. Now you can use these and I don't, I don't know if you want to, but you can. So by default, it will cancel the noise outside. Uh, now, of course, you have just better isolation because they're filling your whole ear, but you also get some active noise canceling. I think it sounds a little bit artificial. There's no, there, it's, it's, um, a magnitude of difference between these and the Sony noise canceling headphones. Uh, but you can also turn on some other features within that realm. You can turn on ambient sound, which lets in some additional frequencies so that you can hear if a car is about to run you over. Uh, and there's also an additional feature within the ambient sound section called voice focus. Voice focus lets you hear people talking because that's totally what you're trying to get away from, right? Uh, no, this might be just good if you're if you're um, you know coming up on a group when you're walking your dog and you just want to talk to them seemingly like a normal person and not just cough up uh, an earbud from your ear. Uh, so that's it's an interesting uh, idea, but I don't know if it sounds very good. I tried it here at home and I tried it at work and it does not sound good. Like the, you can hear the reverse white noise frequencies when you turn it on. It's not not good. I would not recommend it. Finally, uh, my favorite feature is you can use Find My Earbuds, which lets you remotely find your earbuds if you drop it while you're doing something. You can take your phone out and go into the app, and basically you hit a button, and it will play various loud tones in the earbuds so that it, you can uh, find them even from a distance if you needed to. Um, I haven't tried this in person yet, but in theory, when you read the documentation, it says that it's really loud, so you should not have it in your ear when you do so. So, in conclusion, should you buy these? So I don't have AirPods. I never will have AirPods until I have an iPhone. So I can't give you a comparison on whether you should buy these or AirPods. Now, if you have an Android device, almost certainly these will work better. I am surprised that they actually fit in my ears and stay in my ears. So... Whether or not they are worth $130 to me, well, they actually may be. Now, I would have said prior to this, why pay $130 now when you could save up and buy real noise-canceling headphones for the future? However, it does make sense to me that you would have different headphones for different purposes. So until now, I've always taken my bone conduction headphones out on dog walks. But now I'll consider taking these out instead. Um, in you know, that's a, that's a quality improvement. Are they relatively the same price? Actually, uh, my bone conduction headphones were about $70. These are about $130, so roughly twice as much in cost. So if you didn't have uh, existing Bluetooth headphones, I would say maybe consider getting these. Uh, you know, 
if you do a lot of outdoors activities. If you don't really do stuff outside where having, you know, bulkier headphones would matter, if you just work in an office or you're just at home for casual listening, or if you're producing a podcast, for example, don't get these. Instead, get ATH50Xs or some actual studio quality headphones. Or for work, get something like the uh, Sony noise canceling headphones. Those are better in those situations. But for outside active use cases, these Galaxy Buds are surprisingly good. So that's that's pretty much my review for these uh, Galaxy Buds. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this very brief review. Uh, of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at RyanMR, and of course on my website, RyanRapperside.com. And of course, you can also follow us on reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV and leave us a comment. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Thanks for listening and watch out for buds. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.